Welcome to Devlog 4 of Death Inc. In this video, we're going to be adding enemies to our office themed roguelike. Because last Devlog, we made a bunch of guns, but obviously, you can't have guns without something to shoot at. So, this Devlog, we are making three enemies to add to our game. Here's the idea for enemy number one this is Big Guy, also known as Bob. Bob is just a regular employee like everyone else, who just happens to be slightly bigger. His job is to follow the player around until he gets close enough to, well, smash him to bits. So that's the idea, let's go make it. I started off with a simple sprite of Bob just standing around, with an idle animation to go with it. Then after importing that into the game, I made the all important smashing animation, in which he jumps up into the air and smashes his fists on the ground. And after also putting that into the game, it was time to start working on some behaviour. So I added the player to the scene and told Bob to start following him. Then when he got close enough and the time was right, he would leap towards the player and smash down his gigantic fists. The only problem now is that he's kind of floating towards the player instead of walking, although in a way that is more terrifying. But after making a walking animation, which took way longer than I'm willing to admit, he now has his two feet back on the ground, and I think he looks amazing. So congratulations Bob, you'll be the first enemy added to our game. But before we move on to enemy number two, I'd first like to add a new gun to our collection because I feel like shooting paper at a guy like this just doesn't feel quite right. Luckily, after last devlog, you guys posted a ton of gun designs in the Discord. Specifically, this one caught my eye. It's a multicolour pen that acts as a mini gun. I mean, what's not to like? So huge shout out to Bobbo for designing this awesome gun, and let's put it in the game. First thing I had to do was adjust the colours a little bit to make it fit the game better. Then I had to separate the GIF into a sprite sheet and I imported that into the game. It was a bit tricky to get the colours to display properly as the sprite of the gun had changed dependent on which colour bullet was being fired, but after figuring out I could use the animator to solve that problem, it was all smooth sailing. The only thing I still had to do was make some simple bullets and there we go. Our first automatic gun is now done and honestly, it's my favourite gun so far. It actually feels like it has a lot of impact and I love the design. So thanks again Bobbo for designing this awesome gun. But now it is truly time to move on to enemy number two. And here's the idea. This is the object chaser, also known as Steve. Steve always had an affinity for stationary objects. Some even say he likes the office furniture more than he does his co-workers. Anyway, after the player approaches him, Steve will look around the room and choose an object as a target. Then after running towards it as fast as he can, he'll use his object to attack the player in any way he can. So that's the idea. Let's go make it. First thing I did was redesign some of the object sprites, because I felt like some of them were in desperate need of an upgrade, especially the water dispenser. And after I finished that, I made a running animation for the enemy sprite, so it doesn't look like he's just casually walking towards these objects. But then it was time for my favourite thing ever. Pathfinding. We need our enemy to be able to find and run towards these objects, which sadly enough means we need pathfinding. I started by adding an invisible grit to the game. This was to make it easier for me to program and at the same time improve the performance. Every object in our game will now, instead of being at a random position, occupy one or more of these grid cells. The pathfinding will then use this grid to determine where it can go and what the destination is. Getting this to work properly wasn't too difficult, but it did take some fine tuning to make sure the enemies weren't clipping through walls or walking through the objects. But after that was working, I began writing the enemy behaviour. First thing I need to do is find a random object, which is literally two lines of code. Then it tells the pathfinding script it wants to go to wherever that object is, and it will start moving towards it. Then when it reaches the object, it will turn into a different enemy, which is a combination of the two. Which brings us to the water shooter. This enemy is a merger between the water dispenser and the object chaser. For its design, I started out with our regular enemy and added the water jug from the water dispenser to it, but turned on its side. Then I added some details to make it look a little bit more interesting, and after that, I made this idle animation, which just looks incredibly cool, with the water moving separately inside of the water jug. And I continued this with the shooting animation, in which the water adds some really dynamic secondary movement to the animation, which makes it look 
that much better. And after putting that into the game, I had a bit of a difficult time making it aim at the player, but after a lot of attempts, I got it to work, which means the next step was making it shoot. So I made a very simple water bullet, added some particles to it, and made the enemy fire it. I would have preferred a sort of flamethrower, but with water, but I concluded that was too difficult to make, at least for now. But with the water shooter done, along with the object chaser, the only thing we need now is a transition between the two. So I made this animation in which the enemy picks up the water jug from the water dispenser. The idea is that the animation is played when the enemy comes close enough to the object, after which the enemy itself is deleted and the water dispenser plays this animation. Then it spawns the new water shooter enemy at the exact same point as the animation. And although it looks a bit weird when the enemy seemingly teleports to behind the water dispenser, I think this is a fine compromise for how much easier it is to program, because we can use the exact same code for every single object. But Okay, that is Steve Dunn. He'll be our proud second enemy to be added to the game, with the potential to become a lot more different enemies in the future. Which brings us to enemy number three. This is Sleepy, also known as Greg. Greg just didn't get enough sleep last night. When the alarm went off in the morning, he hadn't gotten a single minute of sleep, resulting in him being incredibly tired at work. So when the player approaches him, he does absolutely nothing. And in fact, he is vast asleep. But then comes his saviour in the form of coffee. He takes a sip and suddenly he has all the energy in the world. He starts chasing the player at top speed, using all the energy the coffee gave him. Meaning a couple seconds later, he is fast asleep again, repeating the cycle. So that's the idea, let's go make it. I started off with a simple sprite of Greg barely standing, with his clothes being quite messy. Then I made an animation of him sleeping, which I realised may be a bit over the top, but then again, I'm going for quite a cartoony style. Then I used the other running animation we made earlier as a base to create this animation. And last, but certainly not least, I made a transition between the two, in which he drinks coffee, stands up straight, and prepares to start running. But after I put everything into the game, I felt like something was missing. So I added some Zs or Zs floating up when he's sleeping to really signify he is out. Then it was time for the behaviour. The most important thing was a timer, which both decides how long he'd sleep and how long he'd chase the player. When the timer is up and he's sleeping, the transition will play and he'll start running at the player. When the timer runs out again, he'll fall back into a deep sleep with dreams of running towards a guy with giant offer supplies in his hands. I'll be honest, it's not the most interesting enemy in the world, but I am quite happy with it. But that is Greg Dunn, making him the third enemy to be added to our game, and the last one for this devlog. I really like all three of these enemies, but I'm going to be honest when I say that my ideas for more are limited, to say the least. So if you have any ideas for an enemy to add to this game, please let me know. There's also a channel on the Discord dedicated to any ideas for the game, and any designs you might have for both enemies, guns, or anything else you can think of. But that's it for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope the next one will be even better.